So I'm going to come back over here for the query. And I also said something else too. I purposely made it to where you could repeat all these processes. Being an instructor, I've particularly learned that there's nothing that substitutes for hands-on experience. Nothing. Um, granted though, lectures can have a big effect on, on picking up the learning curve, which is what I'm doing over here. But for this particular part, I used all these tutorials on purpose so that you could repeat what I did at your own leisure. And I, and I emphasize that until you've repeated what I've done, and I emphasize that now, um, by actually going through these after you've watched the lectures, um, you still just usually won't quite know it. You've got to go ahead and actually, and actually get that hands-on experience, and this is great for that. So I'm going to copy this tutorial, all free, all available from Microsoft, no cost. Then I'm going to come back and come back to my data set, and I'm going to hit Control-V just to paste it. And then I'm going to test it out by clicking Run to make sure that it actually gives data. Yes, it does. So I'm going to click Next. And now I'm going to choose a new type of chart, which is the bar chart. So very interesting over here. Here's my bar chart right over there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click Next. Then here we go, starting back yet again with our categories, values, um, with our categories, values, and series. Now we're going to be using categories and values for this particular lecture. And what our goal is is our goal is going to be uh, is going to be to display some categories, multiple different multiple different values. Okay. Some sort of some sort of multiple different um, type of value, um, some sort of column anyway, with multiple different distinct values, and we want to then turn around and display the cells for each of those, the cells for 2008 and 2009. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start first by coming in here, and I'm going to bring last name into categories. Right off the bat, notice that I'm not touching first name. I'm using last name. Why? Because I'm gonna, I want to match cells to every single distinct last name value. So now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to bring in cells 2009 first and then cells year 2008 second. Now let me explain what this is going to do. This is going, let's click back over here and let me come up. This is going to give me this bar chart like this. Now notice over here that this is last name over here. You can see Chris Chris Ashton, David Bradley, Brian Burke. Right now, all we've said was just last name. We'll see how to add the first name in there later on. So for every single last name, we can see this is going to have the sales for 2008 or, or, um, or for 2008 and 2009. So there you guys can actually see 2008 and then you can see 2009 right above it. So you guys can see how this is valuable. And you see where this works, where something like this works very, very well is that what you can do is you can oftentimes use these categories to be able to see multiple different value type fields. So how they compare. So for example, give me sales for year 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012 for territory United States. Category would be, you know, category would contain the value United States inside of it. And then the values would contain all those different numerical fields that get summarized. So very nice to be able to understand that. Okay, um, now going a little bit further, I'm going to turn around now and get back into my report. And then I'm going to click Next. And then I'm going to stay with Ocean and I'm going to click Finish. Now, once I'm over there, I'm going to do something for our demo purposes. And I'm learning from doing these videos as I continue to do them now. Um, I'm going to make this very big. These videos, by the way, are best viewed on um, 1920 by 1080 resolution. And even though I'm making this real big, half the reason is so that that way during your video while you're watching it, it'll display appropriately. That's the main reason, actually. So right there, bam, just like that. So I expand it to that maximum size. Now, we've talked about sizing already in previous vi videos, so keep that in mind. But over here, this is just so that we can all see the screen green quite clearly as I begin to go through this exercise. So something that I've learned anyway from having watched the videos. Okay, now, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to this vertical axis. We talked about this earlier inside of another tutorial, right? So you left click over here and where you see all these labels right there, that's the vertical axis right, um, right next to the bars. And what I'm going to do is I want to change something up. So let me show you what I want to change first. I'm going to click Run. And in Run, notice that, notice that we have one, two, three, four, and then a label appears on the fifth axis. One, two, three, four, label appears on the fifth axis. So we're only getting an interval, we're only getting what's known as an interval of five. That means, that means that the label appears every five values. We don't want that. We want the label to appear on every single value, right? So how could we change that? 
we change the interval to one. Let me show you how to do that. So click on design. Now come over to the axis properties and tell it, I want to change when you're going to actually display this particular um, label. So I'm going to right click over here and then I'm going to click on vertical axis properties. Okay. Now, once I'm on vertical axis properties, what I'm going to do is come down to, um, uh, what I'm going to do over there is come down to axis range and interval. And then inside of the interval box, I'm going to go ahead and just type one, which means now display this on every single, every single um, interval. Then I'm going to click OK. And there's one more thing I want to do. Here's an axis title over here for the vertical. Maybe I decide that I don't actually need that. So we saw how to eliminate that a little bit earlier on inside of another tutorial. What I do is I right click and then where it's got show axis title, uncheck it. There. Now I'm going to come back and click run. Excellent. So we just saw two very nice things. One new thing that we hadn't covered in previous tutorials. We saw how we could actually take an axis, right? And we saw how we could change the interval on the vertical axis. So you guys could see that to go one, two, three, four, five, six. And we had changed intervals before, but at least in this case, we actually see it apply to a um, bar chart. And then we also saw how we could take the axis um, title and just right click and, and actually uncheck the show axis title to give us more space. So now we have more space vertically over here. And this looks a lot cleaner. This looks a lot cleaner. Plus, all these values are labeled. So we can see what these bars actually mean. For Zing, we can actually see, you know, for example, what the cells went up to. All right, but this still needs a lot more work. It's not there yet. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and change, change the display on the vertical axes to show last name and first name. See, remember we had that, remember we had that first name and we had the last name field, but we only used the last name field? In design, an important point to know in report design is that you'll oftentimes have multiple different fields which may not be immediately used through the wizard but will be used in the report and usually what we'll do is we'll use what are known as expressions right calculations that do something not just necessarily calculate some numerical value but maybe display a value in a certain sort of way or whatever else or maybe add a different color all sorts of things we're going to use an expression to basically add first name over here so users can see first name and last name so that our report becomes more clear so I'm going to click design. And then what I'm going to do next is I'm going to click on chart data right over there. Now, this was sort of interesting. I clicked on chart data over here. And what happens is chart data has a category called um, category called last name within the category groups. So what this is saying over here is group by last name. Now, I had an I had an in-depth discussion on grouping, right, where I said grouping is where you take the distinct value of some column or the distinct value of multiple columns combined. And I displayed that mechanism inside of my list tutorials that we had a little bit earlier. So right now, understand that by grouping, we took the distinct value for every single last name, right? And then what we did was we summed up the sales for 2008 and 2009 by that last name. All right, now what we're going to do over here is we're going to add the first name to it. Now we're still grouping by last name but we want to display first name also. So let me show you how we actually do that. I'm going to right click on this first and then I'm going to click on category group properties. So I come to category groups where I've got the last name group. Now in category group properties I'm going to go to label. Label tells me this is the way I want this to display. So I could have put anything in there for the display, right? Alright, now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to hit the F of X button where I say, you know what? I want to define my own custom formula for what to display over here. All right, that's good. Now I'm going to add a classic concatenation function, which is where I, which is where I bring together two terms, right, or two different strings or two different um, string terms like first name, last name. You, you guys see what I mean? Something like that. And I'm going to hit and space. This is classic concatenation, and then I'm going to use double quotations comma, space, double quotation, which symbolizes basically add a, add a space and then add a comma. And then I'm going to do another space and I'm going to put and right over there, which basically says add some other field. And then space again. And then fields. And I'm going to tell it now for the fields, I want to display fields, first name, dot value. 
fields first name dot value was that unused column that we had brought in earlier what we're doing over here now is we're going to take the value of that unused column that actually matches the last name value and we're going to include it inside of the display results so this doesn't this doesn't affect the grouping it only dis it only affects the display but our users need that for cleaner reports so I click OK now I'm going to turn around and actually click OK over here now I'm going to click run and look at that there's Zing Jeffrey there's there's Yo Kim John and we can see now the comma the space and then and then the first name so now we've actually concatenated this much cleaner at this point all right so we've got that done on the first part now let's go a little bit further sometimes you know looking at this right now um, sometimes our users need to see sorting you know wouldn't it be nice if our users could say you know what hmm I can actually see that you know this is sorted by the first name the second name the third name the fourth name and sorting really becomes important whenever you have lots of values or something so that users can easily find the value that they need very quickly so let's go ahead and sort this over here for our users essentially um, so, sort these actual category groups and let's choose some sort of sorting formula for them I'm gonna click design then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and double click the chart again to bring up what's known as the chart data tab which tells me essentially the values and the groups that are being used now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to come back to category groups I'm going to find last name again because that's my only group anyway right click on it and then left click on category group properties now I'm going to click on sorting over here so this is where I can define sorting right here now what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna click on the FX button okay so for sorting now I'm gonna give it my own custom formula and, and instead of sorting by just last name what I'm gonna tell it to do is actually sort by last name and first name so very handy sort with classic sort that you'll do by the way so here's an and space there's a double quotation comma then I'm gonna put in another space and then there's a double quotation and then space and then and again so I'm saying sort by first name and or, or last name and first name so I'm gonna put in fields again so that's the column right there and then first name dot value right over there now I'm gonna click OK after that I'm gonna go ahead after that what I'm going to do next is look at the order part and I'm going to tell it to not only sort by this but I want it ordered in descending value so I want it going from you know Z to A in this case instead of A to Z so another very little handy tip to get down we haven't done that yet in any of the other tutorials so you're seeing how to sort right over here or how to sort by multiple different values by essentially using an expression which you can do let me click OK now let me click run now notice what's happened over here so now it sorts by last name and then last name and first name as you can see over here so there's Alva Kara Lewis and you can see where it sorts by every single one of those terms essentially that's very very handy whenever you don't have unique um, that's very very handy whenever you need to actually you know whenever you don't have unique last names or something like that that can be very beneficial grouping will naturally try to make things unique but but it depends upon what you group by if you group by one column yes every value is going to be unique like what we've got over here but had we grouped by two columns it would have been possible to have last names that essentially um, were in common with other you know were in common while having different first names so everyone see that over there so this is our actual sorting so cool 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 we came back and we actually we actually sorted it at this point so we've gone a little bit further let me click design real quick and then let me just look at something real fast over here let's do a design and then let's turn around and let me do a and and let me make sure that run has been clicked on so let me just click on this real fast right click back over here and click on category group properties again make sure that our sorting has been defined yep it is Z to A hit OK and come back and hit run I'm gonna hit refresh because you guys can see this little thing you guys see over there there's A to Z I just noticed that and you know I might be like wait a minute didn't we say Z to A sometimes it won't update um, sometimes it'll have a cache and you have to force it to refresh for the report so you just hit refresh like this 
and then what essentially happens is it'll go ahead and refresh. So let me show you that in just a second.